And to start off, uh, let's look at Vodafone, who may not have had a direct interest in the Eagles Vikings game, but does have a direct interest in Gen AI. And specifically, they're testing uh, the Gen AI waters and working with Microsoft uh, to write code. So what is important about this is that Vodafone was prominent in the Oracle database at Azure launch uh, that was done this week. And the major goal of that particular launch is to ease uh, AI workload administration, scaling and migration across multi-cloud environments. So already Vodafone is playing, I think, a, a major role in terms of establishing mindshare and gaining some thought leadership as to how AI technology and Gen AI in particular can have an impact on telcos specifically. This is really interesting because it might have been a hard idea. Where in the world are they going to use this? And it was like, boom, writing code. That's a brilliant idea. It's going to be a really great thing for companies like Vodafone that, you know, don't have consumer facing software or don't have consumer facing, you know, products, but they have these services. So using it to help increase and, and build their services, it's brilliant. Uh, yeah, I agree wholeheartedly. And to drill down a bit, Todd, Vodafone is uh, running proof of concepts, naturally, yeah, to figure out where the Gen AI could productively and safely be used, to your point. Yeah. And, well, they're diverse. Um, as many as 10 involved chatbots, and that includes Toby, and that is Vodafone's customer-facing chatbot, as well as Ask Her. Uh, hopefully, I'm doing that justice in terms of the acronym. And that's the chatbot that's used by the employees and uh, systems uh, also uh, that are targeted at supply chain management and other you know, telco related activities. Now, of key interest is that Vodaf Vodafone has now exposed some developers to its cyber hub team to GitHub Copilot. And that is basically this, uh, the code writing version of ChatGPT. That's how oh, it can wow. be best thought of. That's interesting. Right on. And so with that, uh, what that can do is churn out code when asked in natural language to solve a programming problem. So this is in contrast to chat GPT, which is getting the lion's share of headlines and publicity and so forth, basically enabling any internet user to gain, say, an essay on, you know, how dandelions grow and things of that <laughs> nature. So this is a different, uh, you know, animal altogether, you know, being able to do code. And it can uh, do other, I think, important uh, capabilities such as translating from Python to JavaScript and between various other programming language. And so this is something that's been flying on the radar a bit, but it's very important, integral to AI. And I know, Todd, you have definite thoughts on this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, as far as this, this to me, I, I've been covering Gen AI and AI. I've been covering AI for a number of years, Gen AI in the last few years. But this could really make a giant difference because using Gen AI to write code could make code better. If it's well-trained, if it's well-trained, then it won't make perhaps mistakes that a developer might make inadvertently. Um, Gen AI could certainly help us create better code, which would be more reliable code. That, that to me is one of the things, and it makes so much sense. I mean, Vodafone, like I said, these kinds of things, the code that they need is the code that runs their systems, the code that consumers don't see, business users don't see, but it's the code that makes it all possible. And to me, this would be a great thing. It could have Vodafone have new features more quickly. It could give Vodafone um, better reliability. It could give Vodafone so many benefits because all of this could be helped along by Gen AI. It's not going to replace, it, it, it shouldn't replace developers. They're going to be needed there, but this can ha help them do more code, more, more code that's even better. So to me, I think this is a huge thing. Yes. And in fact, I think you hit on a key point there. It's a society wide concern. Oh, yeah. Will AI you know, replace jobs in mass? And I think uh, we've been here before. We've seen technological innovations that change the landscape. So it's not necessarily a zero sum aspect. In fact, I think it has been best well put that uh, AI can enable uh, better productivity uh, more efficient uh, workflows and so forth. And so I think it's not so much AI will replace uh, existing workers. I think what is going on is that the workers who use the AI capabilities will just uh, be more effective 
And the, the challenge is workers who are using AI versus workers who unfortunately may not be using AI. So I think that is, you know, kind of how we have to level set, understand, you know, the uh, impact of AI, not just on the telcos, which is certainly important, but across all of society. Oh, of course. Right. And, and right on. And so, yeah, uh, it's not just Vodafone who is, you know, pushing uh, the proof of concepts out there and, you know, some of the experimentation that is so vital to you know, getting this right. 